there, YouTube. Far North Racing here. So if you've read my book, and you really should read my book, you know I'm fond of saying that everything is made of rubber. And that's because there is no material, no matter how strong, that does not deform or bend or twist or otherwise warp when a load is applied to it. That even applies to items that you would think would be relatively immune to warpage, like a cast iron engine block. The truth of the matter, though, is that when you mount the cylinder head and you tighten down the cylinder head bolts or the studs, it actually warps the cylinders out of round. And that's not good because piston rings really like a round surface to seal against. What we want to do is distort the block out of round the same way it would be when it's installed in the car. And then while it's distorted, hone it round. So that way it's round when it's tightened up. If it relaxes back to out of round when we unbolt it, not a big deal. What we care about is what it's like when it's all tightened up. What we need is a fixture called a deck plate or a torque plate. This is a way to subject the block to the kind of forces we want and still have clearance for us to get the hone in. This process dates back to the mid 1960s when NHRA super stock drag racing was at its height. The rules only allowed you to blueprint the engine. So guys were looking for any tiny way they could find some more power and they discovered this. Some people claim that Smokey Eunuch developed this. Uh, he didn't. I've read in his books where he says he's a big fan, but he said he didn't invent it. I haven't been able to chase down the original inventor, but I do know that by the mid 70s, this was common knowledge. Most high end speed shops will have a selection of torque plates or deck plates in stock, but those are for popular engines. Dodge Stealth, not very popular. So if I'm going to have this engine redone properly, I have to make my own torque plate. So let's do it. Drill in chuck, too long to fit. This is why it's useful to have some collet holders. Put the drill in the collet, good to go.
A few minutes later. One hour later. So here's our first cut with this Mesa Tools boring bar. This head that you can see if it's underneath there. And we're not bad. The surface finish could be a little bit better. I was getting some birds nesting and that's probably because that's just a generic triangle insert. It's not designed for aluminum. That's just a, a standard piece of carbide triangle. No chip breaker, no nothing. And I'm getting a little bit of buildup on the tip. So I'm gonna try the crossbar boring bar with an aluminum specific insert to take this out to final size and see if that makes a difference. But that attachment works like gangbusters. That thing's incredible. Uh, the balance is 100% it could use with some sort of balancing thing, but uh, that's a, a slick piece of kit. Let's try that crossbar. So here's the crossbar, left-handed boring bar with a corloy aluminum specific insert in it. As will come to no surprise to absolutely nobody, there is a significant bird's nesting problem. I was running this at 1000 RPM and it clogged up the insert and made a mess. So I slowed it down to 500 and put the coolant on it. And after a bunch of spring passes, it's not terrible. There are a couple of little scratches here and there. The surface finish could be a little better, but that's probably due to rigidity of the machine and uh, just overall balance, plus the challenge of getting the chips out of there. I suspect those little bits of uh, deeper cut are where it gets built up on the insert for a second and then it clears out. This is certainly good enough for the application I'm using now. I only need it to be plus or minus a millimeter, so surface finish is more about a point of pride than anything else, but it does work. That's a good piece of kit. Okay, let's do the other two. So here's the surface finish on a 30 thousandths depth of cut, a straight plunge down to the bottom and then stopping the motor. And you can see that if you keep the cutter loaded up and with the coolant on, it seems to be preventing the chip welding. You can get a, a fairly decent surface finish out of that. 
just as long as you don't have bad luck, like right there, or right at the bottom, where a chip gets temporarily caught behind the bar and starts gouging. I almost want to grind some relief on the back of the boring bar to give the chip some place to go. But that's not bad. Like that's significantly better than that one over there. And that one there isn't terrible. Okay, let's take this out to size and do the third one. So this is 500 RPM, 6,000th depth of cut. And we got lucky and nothing balled up. And that surface finish is actually much, much closer to what I expect to come out of a boring bar. Of course, you do get this, this line here when I pull the boring bar straight out. But uh, that's much better. Okay, so it looks like the right way to do this is 500 RPM, lots of coolant, finish cut around six thousandths. And then when you get to the bottom of the hole, stop the machine and back the boring head out so you don't get the line when you drag the cutter out. One more to go. So we'll have a look now behind door number three. And you can see this one's a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. It starts off a little bit rougher there and it finishes better. Again, just the luck of the draw on whether or not a piece of aluminum gets caught behind the, the leading edge of the boring bar right in. Find the finger right there. That area right there. If that area there catches a piece behind it, you get gouges. If it doesn't, it's nice and smooth. I think this one, I think this one here is the better answer because you've got more clearance between the working end and the support part. But because that insert is a plain carbide insert for steel with no chip breaker, it doesn't like aluminum, uh, I got a better finish out of the aluminum specific insert, notwithstanding the bird's nesting behind the bar. So a proper insert for this one, that's going to be the answer. In this case, it doesn't really matter because all I'm doing is building clearance for somebody else's boring bar as part of the torque plate. It doesn't have to be a bearing finish. But if I ever want to do a bearing fit in aluminum or something like that later on, best to figure it out. In any case, there's our three holes. And the important part, as he looks around the shop for his friggin', there it is. But the important part is the fit of that. And there we go, head gasket fits. So let's clean it and deburr it. We'll flip it over, take a servicing pass, Bob's your uncle. So here we are with the finished product, sitting on top of the block, ready to be sent off to be machined. You can see some standoffs so that the bolts, or when I finally finish it, the studs are the right length. Let's come down like this. There's the standoffs. And if we come in closer, you can just see the little ring around each cylinder where the head could come in and cut it. So there we are. Success. Thanks for watching. Ding, ding, around one. Ding, ding, round one. Now the battle's begun. Ding, ding, around two.